Well, hey everybody, I'm Jan Erickson from Stepping Aside and welcome to another edition of Back Porch Herbal. Um, today we're going to make uh, an herbal oil, which is an extremely simple thing to do. It's basically, you know, add plant material into a container, pour oil over it, and there you go. Um, ideally, what I like to do is I like to do this in a way that, that I, I use the sun. I, put, I stick things outside and I use fresh flour. Uh, pour oil over it but the thing about using fresh flour you have to remember is uh, uh, there's water content to it so you can't put a lid on it you have to put cheesecloth over it so that the gases escape and you're going to want to let it sit out there for a couple of weeks um, flower petals are more sensitive uh, that some have volatile oils you know whatever whatever's in there uh, the constituents in there, um, they're sensitive enough that you don't need the whole month to, to do an, an oil infusion. So uh, like doing uh, uh, mullein oil or whatever, unless you're doing a triple oleate or something where you keep adding to it, um, that's really fun to do too. Uh, you're still using fresh flour, but um, like I let mine go about three weeks this time. Uh, I just kept adding more and more and more to it uh, and then I would drain it out and 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 strain it out and and uh, 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 just add more to that particular oil add more mullein flour to it I have a lot of mullein well not as much as I used to have um, but uh, I have I have mullein that grows around the property so I can just go out and pick the flowers when I want to make a, a a mullein oil and mullein oil is great um, it's it's uh, um, it, it helps. I mean, it's it, it deals with pain. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, you know, so if you have sore muscles or something, you know, you can rub it on the sore muscles and and the joints and whatnot. And it, and it helps relieve pain, too. Uh, but today's uh, oil I want to make is going to be for the skin. Um, I'm going to use mostly uh, if I have enough, mostly sweet almond oil. Um, I've already got some in the pot that I'm going to heat it up in. we're going to do a quicker method on it um, again heat is an issue when working with herbs and so you don't want to go above say 140 degrees um, and so if you're going to use a crock pot to do it you need to probably use the keep low setting low is not low enough low is not is going to low is going to be higher than 140 degrees typically at least my crock pots this has been the case and i find that i actually had to go out and buy one that has a you know, a, a high it had i think it has high medium low and keep warm and I use the keep, and whenever I do herbal infusions that way via the crock pot, I use the keep warm setting. Now, I don't have to use my actual crock pot. I'll show you what I'm going to use. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and use this. This is by Presto. Um, and I'm not doing an ad for the Presto thing. This is just one I have. But the cool part about it is it it has a it starts at 200 in terms of the the actual, you know, degree settings, but it has a warm setting and that's that's enough. It's somewhere between 100 and 140 degrees. So, so I'm going to use this warm setting uh, when I do this, and I'll go ahead and I'll put this up here. Um, in fact, we'll probably go ahead and turn this this way. Uh, maybe would be a better way to do this. That way you can see the pot that I'm going to use, and it's got one of those cool uh, magnetic uh, stinger thingies. Well, the stinger goes inside, but then this just connects in and then you just have it on the warm setting and uh, make sure I don't have it any more than that. Um, I've already got some going in there. I put some in there already. Uh, I just wanted to show you though, um, if I have, can you see, you won't be able to see unless I hold it up. The ingredients again that I'm going to use, calendula, uh, and again, this is all dried. We're gonna take the little blossoms off and leave the green part over on the table. Uh, so that's in there. Um, I've got a couple different kinds of roses. I've got some red. I also put some uh, of, of the, the whitish pink that I have, um, some paler rose that I have, and I have that in there. Um, I also have been, I also put some, uh, uh, I have some lavender here uh, that I actually need to jar up. And I just took the, the lavender flower and I didn't use as much of that as I used with the calendula. I want the calendula to be the primary uh, flower. So, so far we've got calendula, rose petals, lavender, and then lastly, chamomile, again, from the garden. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the lid back on it. Chamomile's got, it's pretty volatile. The oils are pretty volatile, so they can, 
dissipate when exposed to air and light. And then ultimately, see, you mix it all up. Now you can grind it all up into a powder if you want to, but I don't. Um, I just mix it all up and uh, get it good and mixed. And then I'm going to add it more here into the pot. And uh, I'm just going to use a little paintbrush here to stir it. But like right now, what I have in here, let me show you, um, it's, not, it's not covered in the in, in other words it's just a little bit well i don't need to take the whole thing off let me just take this part off uh it's already heating up um but you see it's there the oil is not covering it and you want it to cover it uh so basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to pour the rest of this uh, uh almond oil in there and I think that's going to be enough. I've got some olive just in case, but you want it to be soupy. You know, you don't want it to, in other words, what I mean by, well, you know what I mean by soupy. So it's not thick. You want it to be movable and whatnot. And here, this is real movable. Um, and, and you don't have any, any real, uh, uh, you don't have any 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 herbs that are just sticking up, any flowers that are sticking up out of there. It's all basically covered. Um, I might put just a little bit of olive oil in it, just for extra good measure. Uh, but basically, that's what you're going to do. And then you cover it. And then again, heat it up. Now you're gonna wanna probably, you know, do this for maybe six or eight hours on low. You know, well, I have it on warm. Um, and it's just gonna heat it up enough that it's going to uh, infuse all of it into the oil. And when it's done, um, you're gonna strain it out really well. And you can at that point just use it as is, or you can, uh, uh, maybe pour some in a little tin if you and and here's the thing i have one of those um, glass top stoves and so one of my burners one of my elements is actually a warmer one and it, it gives a range of you know one to four or something like that uh, it's a keep warm element and uh what i like to do is use that one or you could use a coffee a coffee warmer something i mean you can get fancy and use a double boiler and all that stuff but you don't have to when you're making a salve out of this so you just pour some of this oil into a little tin you know or you know what i like to use tins for salves pour it in there and then take some beeswax pearls and you're not going to use a whole lot when it's when you're just working with a tin because you're using a small amount just take a pinch of them and put them in there maybe a couple pinches and you are so in other words you're not filling it up you know essentially um the idea is usually I, I think that the the actual ratio is like a cup of oil to a quarter cup of beeswax pearls um but we're not going to be using that much right uh, so what you could, although if you are and you're going to make a big amount and then you'll just pour it from there into the tins to let it set up, you could do that. So if you are doing that, if you are going to make the whole thing into salves, for example, you would take a cup of the oil to a quarter cup of, 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 of beeswax pearls and, uh, or, or whatever ratio you could make out of it. You, but you see the ratio basically that you're using. Uh, and so you, you can adjust it from there, depending on how much oil you have. But so if you don't have a cup, then which you should from this. Uh, but basically, um, you would then pour that in there, let it let them dissolve, right? And then uh, once that happens, you can take a spoon and stick in it and pull it out and then just carry it over. And I like to use a piece of foil under it. And then I set it in the refrigerator. It's called doing a spoon test. And, and then if it, and if in the next, you know, 10 minutes or so it sets up, you know, really well, it's nice and, 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 and well, completely savvy, you know, <laughs> then, then, uh, and it's not, you know, dripping or anything, then, you know, you got the ratio, right? Um, if you, if it's not, if it's not set up enough, then, you know, you need a little bit more beeswax pearls. And the nice part about using pearls is, I mean, they're little, they're little beads, right? So you can, 
you can do a little bit at a time and you can control the amount a little bit better. I like them the best, really. I also use beeswax uh, comb from my hives. And then if it happens to have a little bit of honey in it, well, that's even better, right? <laughs> but but there, it, I find that actually I, I get a better, I, I have better control when I use the pearls. So, but, but if I don't have any, like I don't have any right now, I just go and grab some comb and, and use it. Uh, and so, uh, again, you're just going to have to kind of play with that, though, if you're using beeswax comb from the hive, because it's real thin, it's real delicate. And so you end up using less than you think you are, you know. And so, so you just kind of have to test that. It's a little... It's not as forgiving as the pearls, basically. So you might have to do a spoon test for a while, more than one, to, to see, okay, do I have the right consistency or not? Uh, but if you don't want to do that, if you just want to use it as an oil, it's great. And uh, uh, just for your for your skin, you can... The thing about the thing about calendula, I don't know if I mentioned this, uh, is that it's it's uh, it not only repairs tissue, it's good for burns. So if you happen to burn yourself in the kitchen, you can put calendula oil on it. But with all the rest of this, um, it just increases the whole medicinal quality of it. Uh, so again, we used primarily calendula, uh, then some rose petals, then some lavender, not as much, and not as much on the, the chamomile, probably less on the chamomile and lavender. But you know what? You can do whatever you want, really. And, and you can use other, this is just what I happen to have here in my room, right, in my still room. I, I have, I, I, you can use honeysuckle. I actually have some honeysuckle and I don't know where it is, but, but if I knew where it was, I'd probably use it as well. Honeysuckle is wonderful. Uh, you can do, um, uh, and, and I just think that you could add it to this blend, uh, the chamomile, the lavender, the rose petals, and the calendula, and you'd have a really nice, uh, uh, flower oil that that is just I I mean it's emolument it mo it's a emollient. I can't say that today. It's uh, anti-inflammatory. The rose petals are antiseptic as well. Um, you know there there there's there so many uses for flowers. You could take and make a a calendula tea, for example, and use it as a hair rinse. Uh, the same with any of these, really. You could use them as, put them in a, a tea blend and, 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 and infuse it and then strain it out and, and use it as a hair rinse. Some people do that. Uh, so there's a lot of things, a lot of ways you can use flour. Uh, but today we just decided to do an oil and uh, it's very, very simple. And so I'm going to let this sit here. I'm probably going to go ahead and get maybe a little silicone mat to put under this. Although the bamboo should be fine. The legs don't get that hot on this thing. So in fact, they don't really get warm at all. But, but the rest of it does. This is radiating heat right now. Um, but I love this little pot. It's really witchy. You know, I, I've got my cauldron sitting over here. Um, but it's not. It's just a cast iron cauldron. But, but this is... Uh, uh, kind of cauldron like so it's very cool um, but uh, but yeah I mean again we're gonna we're gonna want to keep the lid on it for for the whole time and and when it's done let it cool just a smidge not a whole lot because you don't want to work with burning hot oil <laughs> because even at 140 degrees or whatever it's going to be here um, you're still looking at uh, uh, something that can burn your skin so uh, again you know make sure that uh, uh, you can you can filter it through cheesecloth um, when you go to strain it. Uh, you can do that, uh, uh, and that works as well. I also have a, a, a tincture press that you can use, although I kind of like to leave that just for for tincture and not well. Well, I use I do use it for cannabis uh, uh, infusions. I do use it for that. So you can use that for oils as well, um, but. Uh, uh, but basically, the easiest way to do it is just to put some, some cheesecloth within a strainer, have a strainer, and then put some cheesecloth in it, and then just pour your oil through that. Uh, and then that, that will grab everything, and, and it won't get in, into the rest of your oil. Uh, although I actually don't care if I have you know, plant material in my oil, but still, so you, my oils don't ever look pristine, but, but anyway, that's what I would recommend. I would just recommend filtering it through, um, uh, a strainer, a real fine mesh strainer and, uh, uh, some cheesecloth and, uh, uh, that should do it. 
and uh, you'll have a really nice uh, herbal oil that you can use this winter um, when your skin gets dry. So anyhow, that's it. Very, very simple. Uh, making oils is, is the simplest thing to do. Um, and again, if you want to do it the quick method with the heat, you can do it that way. Otherwise, in the summertime, stick it in a sunny window if you're using uh, uh, you know, the dried uh, flowers. But if you're using fresh, again, I would leave it outside uh, in the sun. Uh, I mean, you can still stick it in a sunny window, but I like to just stick them outside. That way there's no interference, right? No trees are getting in the way because I don't have a clear... I don't have a window that's that's clear that way. Uh, so I just stick them outside on a stump or, or, or something, a little table or, or I have some stumps out there I can set them on. Uh, and uh, uh, with, with, some, with a, 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 some cheesecloth over it, not thick, just maybe one or two layers, put a, a rubber band around it to keep it tight and just let it infuse that way for, for a couple of weeks uh, outside uh, during the summer. That's to me the best way to do it. Uh, but this works as well, so um, try that uh, and uh, see how that works for you. So anyway, I'm going to write this up probably somewhere, um, probably somewhere over there on the blog, uh, what, what we did here. Uh, or uh, what I might just do is, is you know, on this, the, the See More uh, under the videos on YouTube, um, you click that See More and then it, 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 you can, usually I put links and things there. But I may go ahead and just write something up there just as a reference so you have it. Um, but um, I guess that's it. I'm not sure what I'm going to do next time. I might talk about urinary herbs, but I don't know. We'll see. You just never know. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Again, it's a very simple thing to do. Whether you're using flowers or you're using, I mean, I mean, or you could do any kind of other, you know, uh, uh, herbal oil in a crock pot like this or, or a little tiny uh, presto pot like this. Um, but again, on the keep warm setting, uh, not on low, it's too much. Uh, uh, so, so, you know, one good thing you could do if you have any wormwood, wormwood makes a really nice uh, skin oil for for uh, 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 joints and, and sore muscles. My husband swears by it. You can also do it in liniment form. Um, so lots of ways to use these herbs. Uh, they can be, uh, some of them can be tinctured for, for internal use. Some, some are, are pretty much for, for external use. Um, but, but the point is, is that, um, you know, if, you, if, you're, if you're new to herbs or you're under a treatment uh, from a medical professional, you are probably going to want to check with them before using anything like this. Herbs are medicine. Uh, so that would be the only caveat, particularly if you're pregnant or you're nursing or you plan to become pregnant. You might want to check with your doctor or herbal professional or whoever you go to uh, to make sure that, that adding something herbal to your, to your regimen isn't going to interfere with anything else that might be happening. You know, it's particularly if you're on other kinds of medicines or what have you, uh, whether they're topical or internal or what have you. Um, you're going to want to check with your doctor to make sure that adding something like this is not going to interfere with whatever you're doing if you have already something you're, you're, you're healing from. So that would be the only caveat here. Uh, again, uh, it's just fun to make stuff on your own though, isn't it? And I like, and I like to do that. And, and, uh, uh, I don't know. It's just that sim that symbiotic relationship between plant life and and humans is just it's remarkable and uh, it's it's how medicine started out. So just remember that as beautiful as the flowers are, they're medicinal, and you probably if you're under treatment from a doctor, you might want to check with them before using anything like that. So. Thanks so much, and we'll talk again soon. Um, have a wonderful day, and be good to yourself, be good to one another, and blessed be.